Hey, it's the Webmaster here coming at you, and uh, we're going to continue the series on building a website from start to finish. This is the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the uh, part two of the Joomla version, where we're going to be uh, picking up where we left off here. A uh, little bit, uh, quick refresh here. We've uh, had the domain name, had the username and password, set up the DNS settings, uh, got an FTP access using the file Zilla. Downloaded the Gantry framework, the rocket launcher files, and uh, we unzip them to a local drive. So from here, we're going to pick up where we left off, and that's basically going into the FTP program, which is FileZilla. And uh, <coughs> we've, uh, excuse me, stored the uh, files on the local server here. We've logged in. Uh, you can log into the settings and create the uh, username and passwords from you got that you have from the host. Uh, very simple. And depending on what your home directory is, you go into your home directory drive and then you take all the files that have been unzipped and drag them over and copy. Done deal. So I've already done that and they're already up there. So if you look on the server, if you look on the server, doo -doo -doo. I did change the password. Uh, they're up there. So let me just uh, log back in here real quick. There we go. So all of them are up there. All the local files are now on the web server in the home drive. So with that, go ahead and put in here, upload files to root to um, uh, main directory on website, on site. Okay. So now when we go to the website, uh, let's see here, go here and uh, plug in where we're going, anthonysgym.com, we get the configuration screen. So this is the rocket launcher, and this is what uh, how you configure your initial install. So let's just go ahead and start filling in information. So this is Anthony's Gym. Description, uh, we can enter that later. The email address that you're going to get notifications from the server if need be webmasterE.com, administrator username. Um, let's make a different one up for this one. So this is, uh, yep, that's fine. WebmasterE um, password. Boom. Okay, now this is the uh, database settings wherever you, ever, you have your database. If you have a host like one and one or another one, you can set up your username and passwords for your database. You would create a database with a database name. And uh, from there, you're obviously your host would have that information from what you've set up. So you can gather that information from there. So I have my own personal web servers. So I've already set up the database. But when you do set it up through your admin panel, you will get the username, password, the location of it. Uh, and uh, the, the username. So with that, let's get the uh, let's get that information popular. For me, it's localhost, uh, the username, the password. And the database name. So, for this one, what do we call the database name? All right, this is there. So the name, boom. And next. I don't want to save. Database error, what's going on here? Username. Probably a missed type. Database username. Database username. Database username. Do da. I picked the wrong one. Sorry about that. There we go. That's it. One more time. Clearly, even I have problems with this. Okay. We have 
the database name, database name, Anthony's Gym. We have the username, Anthony's Gym Data, and then we have the password. Sorry about that. All right, so now we're in the next screen. Basically, here we're saying is, do you want the configuration file sent to your email? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I really don't need them, but they'll, they'll send it, and I'll ask you if you want the login and username and password sent to it. And that's fine. So you can hit yes. Is your site offline? No, it is not. And then all the settings. So if your server has some problems, it was going to let you know here if you're not on the right version, say PHP or whatever is not turned on. So you're going to have to configure your host or your host is going to be configured to support a number of these things. Uh, if any of them are red, you can check out what you can do to update or change, <coughs> change them. Okay, install. From here, basically, what it's doing is configuring the uh, the site in, in conjunction with the database so that it's all accessible uh, from the front end, the back end, and uh, loading all the software. This will be the final step, and from here, we're going to log into the be able to log into the site. Then we actually see the site up and running uh, in its uh, templated, you know, stock install version. And uh, the final step here is to remove the installation serve uh, folder. And once that's done, it now has made the site accessible. So we go to the front end. And here it is. Here is the Helium stock install. Pretty straightforward. Pretty simple. Okay. see what else we got here and from there slider now most of the information that we have is going to be done from the back end which is the administrator access so we go in here anthony'sgym.com backslash administrator administrator done deal go ahead here and go back to our now username people just uh do not leave me alone Okay, let's see here, domain, username and password that we set inside the, uh, admin panel, it's am, the webmaster, e, Anthony's gym data. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> you can't make this up. <sighs> Sometimes. Anyway. Okay, here we go. Now we are in the Joomla system, finally. This is the back end, right? This is everything that we will be using to maintain the website uh, in the back end. There's a lot of stuff we may do from the FTP for some speeds, speed configuration and some SEO stuff, but primarily to design the site, it will be done here. Now from here, uh, there's a number of plugins that I use that I will automatically, right from the beginning, no matter what the install is, upload as modules that I use. Some, most of the stuff is free, and uh, easily downloadable. So for right off the bat, new site, don't even mess around, I upload the Joomla version. Install the update and bring the Joomla version up to its current. Usually a lot of security fixes or whatever the case may be. The next piece of information I get is Akiba Backup. Okay, this is a, a, a must have as far as Joomla in install is concerned. This will allow you to easily I mean easily back up your website and restore it should you ever need to do so. So we download the core files 5.4. We have it here. And 
for the module installs, it's pretty simple. Uh, just like anything else, you go into here for the top menu system here, extensions, and go into manage and add from whatever the, the browser or file is. So from here, we just downloaded it. It is the Akiba backup, but we just download into zip form, open it up and go ahead and install it. Uh, so here's exactly some of the issues you run into where you may need to tweak some of your settings within your host. There's a maximum PHP file size. So in my website in general, I have to go in there and tweak it and say, listen, hey, we want a maximum post size bigger than two megs. See right here? So now you, this is something where you'd have to go into your hosting account and or ask your host to change some of the properties needed for for uh, in, for use of Joomla. Now for this particular site, I have it at its uh, um, initial install uh, state. So I'm gonna go into my uh, PHP, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna go into the actual domain in my hosting account and change some of the information. So I will give you an idea of what things look at here. So this is uh, what my interface looks like for my hosting. Uh, here we go. And uh, for PHP, I usually bump the PHP up to the, the current version. I know they're up to uh, version 7 already, so the server does need to be updated. But here's your max upload file size. I usually put that at a different rate. So uh, and then a simple little thing, interface, click OK, done deal all right so that's my interface for handling uh, with uh, hosting settings now we go back and upload it see it's actually a 2.1 meg file it was actually set at 2 before now this should work without a problem and there you go installation of the package was successful so it is now a component and is here now a Kiba backup Right off the bat when you go into it, it figures out your website and it does a benchmarking test so that you can easily uh, save the file and the website in an entire uh, one file location. So it'll go through its benchmarking and come up with that. In the meantime, we'll get our second plugin that I use, which is JCE Editor. JCE Editor. Joomla Content Editor, here it is. I get, I have the pro version, but for this particular case scenario, we will use the free version. Again, download, let's see if I can download the pro. Is it pro still free? No, it is. Okay, so I have the updated version, but uh, you download it again. It's a zip file. Nope, it's making me pay. Where's the free version? How about the core? Is it core? Ah, there, the core enterprise. Mm -hmm. So here, let's back up here. JCE. Uh, back to the home page and download JC, JCE, get the core files and download it. And that'll take you there. Same situation, go back to Joomla, go to extensions, go to uh, manage. Go ahead and again, browse to it, upload the package JCE. And it's done. So this is an editor. And uh, when we get into doing articles, let's see some articles here that they already have here. here. Here, for example, they have some stock things so you can look at. Again, it's a template. It's got filler content. You go into it. You see that the it's a tiny mice editor, uh, and it's it's pretty basic. You know, this is, this, for me, uh, if you're using uh, things like WordPress, you might see how easy in this, this uh, sort of editor is. I like something a little bit, a lot more robust. So that's where we go ahead and uh, cr implement the JCE editor in the system. So you go to control panel. I'm sorry, you go to uh, global configuration system, global configuration. And from there, you change the editor. Change from tiny mice to JCE. JCE will not be in there unless you upload it. So there we go, save and close. Now when we go back into the article, it's going to have a different editor with a lot more functions. See, I mean, there's just a ton and uh, it's just a lot better overall. I mean, things are clear. You can, you know, make a lot of changes and, uh, you know, there's additional plugins that I use that you can configure this 
editor to be way more robust than the stock one. So those are the two that I start off with. And then right off the bat, let's go to see what happens on anthonysgym.com, right? So right now it's live. The site's up and running and uh, is live with all the stock information, all right? Templated information. So I usually, right off the bat, we'll start with a global configuration and take the site offline. Site offline, yes. Save and close. Now, while we, you build and work on the website, there will be a coming soon menu and you can configure the coming soon. See, we're offline. Sorry, we're down. Uh, it's got some of the other stuff you have to change out. So there's an, uh, a templated version of the offline page that I usually configure. These simple stuff, you go into extensions, go into templates. For some reason, you just have to go into one. Usually I go right into the default one that's already selected. And from there, go. Uh, this drop-down menu has uh, one that's called the uh, air, uh, offline page. And you come in here, and we go ahead to the layout section. And this is everything that is on that page. I mean, so usually I look here, I go, well, I don't want the logo. I don't want this stuff. I don't want that stuff. So I come in here and just disable it. And click on that little uh, icon there, the wheel, turn it off, apply and save. Come over here, turn it off, apply and save. The top one. Turn it off. All right, then I come back here and go, okay, did it, what did it turn off? Boom. All right, we still got some information here on the bottom that we may not want our clients to see particularly yet. Come back here, it's the footer, and you'll learn these things. The main bar expanded. There's a map in here I could show you we're going to get into, but let's just turn all this stuff off for now. So it's very basic. Uh, if you're dealing with a client and, you know, they come to the site, you don't want them to see sort of the stock software install that, that's on the page. What happened? What did I do here? Turn off. Off. Here. Now you can leave it to the top. So then we go ahead and save layout. And boom. Now when you come to the page, there's nothing there. And that is the beginning of starting and getting the infrastructure in place to building your own website or your website or a website for a client from beginning to end. So this is part two, the webmaster, your own personal webmaster. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and tune in for uh, version three where we'll get more into it and get into more detail about customizing uh, and adding some more modules uh, into this uh, infrastructure. Thanks for tuning in.